Uh, welcome to the first part in our four-part series of learning and using Blackboard Ultra. So the first question we usually get is, what is Ultra? So we'll go to Walt is Ultra here. Click into this. <laughs> there we go. The way I think about it is, and more you can help me out too, or anybody who's listening to this, is when I think back to one of my first cars, I had the crank handle in the car. I don't know if anybody remembers the crank handle from the car. I like the crank handle for the car. Air conditioned was you use the crank handle to roll down your window. And if you stuck your head out or your arm out or something, that was the air condition that I was used to in my first car as well. Not to age myself too much. <laughs> my first car had a cassette tape. I used the cassette tape because the cassette tape connected to my CD player that I had to like balance in the middle and listen to my new CDs in the car. And when I think of all those types of things, I think of like Blackboard Learn. I loved all those things. I have very fond memories of those things. But what Blackboard Ultra does is kind of updates a lot of these different technologies that we're used to. And there's changes for better or for worse. And there's a learning curve. I think of it as if I go into a rental car for the first time, everything is the same kind of, but it's just different, different places. Things are a little bit different. Maybe this car doesn't have that one thing that my car does. Uh, and that's kind of like the car theme that we have going on. So Ultra to me is instead of having, you know, the crank handle now, you might have the little button that you can roll down your window now. And that's kind of like the automatic windows. Great. A lot of times because I can control all the windows behind for my kids in the back, or I can do two at the same time. But if the computer doesn't recognize it, I click the button and it doesn't work. So there's still issues. It's not like a fix all for everything. When you think about new technologies, I'll think about air conditioning now, turn that knob to make it really cold in the summer and the winter, which is probably not good. I go out and I have the remote start and warm up the car before I go out in this Ohio winter. And that's how I do it before. I can't think about in the day where I didn't have that. And I had to scrape off all the ice and I didn't have a garage and it took me forever to get it ready. And the last thing is you have these AirPlay cars or you have your Android, you connect LCDs. If you've seen like a Tesla, they have a big 10 inch tablet in the middle. That's the, the command center for cars. So all these upgrades. And that's what I think ultra is in a sense. The one thing I do want to mention too is heated seats. So you get new things too. Heated seats is one of my newer cars. And I thought, man, how do I ever live without heated seats? <laughs> Cause heated seats are fantastic. Um, so ultra to me in a big general nutshell is our learning management system is Blackboard Learn. It's going to go to Blackboard Ultra. And Blackboard Ultra is basically a clean, modern design for an LMS. If you look at Blackboard Ultra compared to other competitors, Ultra has a more, I guess, in general, clunkier interface that for students and for instructors alike. And for us working in the background, Ultra is also a way that it makes it more mobile and tablet friendly as well. It looks really nice on different screens for your desktops and laptops. So now that you or your students are on the go or on the move, your content that you put into the course is going to show up really nicely on a phone, an Android phone, iPhone, small, large, all the different size phones. It should look really nice. And it, Blackboard works behind the scenes to make sure everything still looks nice. Things aren't hanging over the edge. So you have to scroll right or scroll back left. Your videos, your embeds, the text all look really nice on the screen. The last thing to me for Blackboard Ultra is it offers, I think, better communication, which is going to be really good for the students and really good for us as we try to communicate with our students, make sure they're on top of things. So yes, we're going to have announcements. It's kind of refreshed. It's a little bit different. And maybe we'll show you a little bit today. But there's also messaging. And it's just a cleaner interface for you know getting in touch with students, leaving feedback, and so on. So again, it's just like the same car that we're used to, just upgraded stuff. Some things are a lot nicer. Some things are brand new. And some things might be a little more trickier to learn. And that's what hopefully this series is going to be about. Just kind of walking you through the Blackboard Ultra experience. So you can kick the tires a little bit, take a look inside and so on. So the first part, just taking a look. Chuck and Katie are going to show you a little bit of what Ultra looks like. So you, you know, kind of go in the showroom, take a look. We can't jump in too much unless you are an early adopter because our classes have not been released at this point where we're recording today until 100 days out from the next semester. So we haven't quite reached out yet. So I would like to say, everybody go out and click your courses. It might not be available to you depending on when you listen or watch this recording. So right now, we'll just do a little show and tell at the moment. The next part in our series is actually letting you get in. So we'll show you ways to access your Ultra course when it becomes available. And then 
we'll do the next step of, okay, let's take a look at what your course looks like in Ultra. It's going to be different. Well, let's just say that one. Good or bad, it's going to be different. It's going to be bad. I say bad because at first it's pretty shocking because it's pretty jarring difference between what it looks like in Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Ultra. You'll see all the components there. It's going to just look a little bit different. Menus are different. The way it appears is different. The way you interact with it is a little bit different. But that's why we're going to take a look at it first. By the third part of the series, it's test drive time, right? You go in, get your assignments, your particular ways that you want to interact with the students, the way you want to give tests, the way you give questions on your assignments. And we'll work with you to make sure that's all copy and over correctly. It's all working correctly as you intend it to be used. So it's actually going out and taking it for a spin. And the last one we're going to have is hopefully just handing off the keys where we go, okay, you feel pretty confident using it. Of course, we're always here. You can always go back to the shop and ask for assistance, but you can go out there and we hand you the keys and you feel pretty confident using an ultra course live with your students, whether it's going to be next semester or maybe two semesters ahead or three semesters or whatever you want to teach. So that's kind of like our four part series. But the first part, again, is just the showroom time. And since it's showroom time, I'm going to throw this off to Katie, who will show us ways to maybe we can get an access Blackboard and why maybe it's going to be really nice for us to use as instructors. So Katie, I'll throw it to you. Thanks. Yeah. Do you want to still share your thing? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So more I can see it a little better. Yep. Than all others. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So I'll keep this part brief. David actually already covered the major reasons that Ultra is beneficial in comparison to Learn. The main reason overall is this mobile optimization piece. That is one of the major things that Blackboard talks about in terms of what they had in mind with the Ultra course view. And we see this as appealing mostly because we've noticed students in recent years using mobile phones more and more even just to access grades, but also maybe to complete short assignments, access resources, and stuff like that. So the number thing, one thing you'll notice when we show you an ultra course is that it is very clean, it's very minimal, it's very much mobile optimized. I have this Padlet uh, that just has a couple other reasons. I'll also share it in the chat because it's incomplete and I would encourage people throughout our series to add any benefits that they recognize about Ultra. I really just kind of got us started with some of my favorites. So I'll touch on these really quickly and then we can dive a little more into what Ultra looks like. One of the things that Blackboard has also discussed in terms of Ultra versus Learn is that Ultra has a lot more built-in progress tracking and part of that is more sophisticated analytics for the discussion board. You can really easily access the discussions in an ultra class, which is really nice. I'm going to click over here really briefly. Anyway, here's the marriage and family class. You can see that there are discussions here. I was just contemplating how to do this without showing student names. So I'm going to go in really shallowly and not show you all of it. But you can see that discussions have this easier link. In addition, like I was saying before, this analytics part on the toolbar offers you just expanded ways to collect data. We'll get into the more advanced features as the series progresses, so I'm not going to go into that. But just knowing that more analytics and simpler access is available, because those really are some major benefits to switching to Ultra. Back to the family. I love that. Okay, so if you want to learn more about the discussion analytics specifically, I recommend screening this little video here. It's just a minute or two long. Actually, I think it's just one minute. Uh, I also hinted at just the easy access of the gradebook. Even beyond that, the gradebook feature is nice because it's so easily accessible. In addition, there are also a few more gradebook features, which can be nice. You can search for a particular student and students to have a similar view where you just see one student's coursework. There's something similar on Learn. This feature is just a little bit improved. Um, you also have the option in the gradebook to assign automatic zeros for missing coursework, which is really nice after having to enter in all those zeros manually. And then lastly, just really building the course design is easier. You can easily add assignments and elements, and Chuck will show you kind of what that looks like, but you'll notice it's extremely user-friendly. I see this as a real benefit for AU too, just something simpler, 
more streamlined, easier to teach and train in. Um, this Padlet, just as a, another note, also includes some areas for you to both stay in the loop on what's going on in Ultra and to add your thoughts. So if you feel so inclined, please know that that's available to you. So I think that wraps up the reasons for using Blackboard, at least using Blackboard in the Ultra view. So the conversion process is somewhat the focus of today's session, although we can help with conversion in all four sessions. And just like David mentioned, we're not necessarily ready for new courses. So that's something that we can work on going forward too. But just to give you an introductory glance, I'm going to use David's sandbox to just show that there is a really easy and user-friendly way to try Ultra Course View. So this is really nice. You can look at it and see if it's for you prior to committing to it. And you can change it back immediately, as you'll see. I'm going to use David's sandbox as an example. What you'll see is that up here you have these options for the student preview to make the class unavailable. Oops. What you want to do first is make another button appear at the top of your screen. And it will resemble the Blackboard logo. So I'll show you what that looks like. Because what that icon actually is, ends up being a button where you can convert your course. So the first thing I want to do is make the course private. It doesn't want me to do this when students are using the course or have access to it. So once I make my class private, you can see that this area is now populated with the Blackboard logo. And it says experience and you learn. So that's how you convert. You really just push this button. Uh, of course, it prompts you just in case you made a mistake. <laughs> and then when you hit OK, you'll see this alert that the conversion process is going on. When it's finished, just like it says, you get an email. And depending on the class, it might take a couple minutes. But this one should convert pretty quickly. So Maura raised her hand, and that's perfect because it's during the conversion, so we can answer yep. a question. Yeah. Maura, feel free to share. So I had a quick question about this. So I'm using Ultra for a brand new class that didn't mm -hmm. have any pre-existing content on Blackboard. Um, but I'm teaching another class that was already built in Blackboard, and uh, I hadn't wanted to change it because I was worried about that. But with this, the class I am currently teaching, could I have it in the sandbox and see how it looks and maybe decide to change it? Or should I not do that when a course is in progress and students are submitting assignments? Um, that's a good question. My guess is you should be able to hit the little, like whether it's like how Katie showed you in making it private or mm -hmm. hitting the little lock in the class in progress, there sh it, that should trigger the little pencil to pop open. And I would have to test this to be sure since it's in progress. Mm -hmm. But once you hit that, it should give you a preview mode in Ultra. And then you should be able to play with it. And you don't like it, you can say that I didn't meet it button and it'll take everything back. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I would be weary during the semester too to do a big change like that, just not to lose content or lose assignments or anything like that. Sure. How easy is it for faculty to get a sandbox? To play in. Um, you just have to do a ticket and request a ticket from Keith. So Maura, you could even possibly do that and just copy the content over to that sandbox and see how mm -hmm. things look in Ultra. Okay. But it does look like it's ready, so we can just click. So you, you may have missed it. A little notification just popped up on this page letting me know that the conversion is complete. So exciting. So let's take a peek. And yes, it is certainly different, right? So now we have the Ultra course view. And you'll notice, A, they give me this disclaimer letting me know that Ultra is still being improved and some features are not perfect. And also along the bottom, it gives me this option to either use the Ultra course if I really like it or to revert back to the Learn course, which it does the same conversion process. But just to peek at this a little bit, You'll know that it's ultra because things will be cleaner, there will be more white space, and you'll see plus signs to indicate where content can be added. That's so simple, but that really is how you can convert a course using that convert to ultra button. So I'm going to click 
back to original chords, just so David has his sandbox as it once was. But that is really the entire process in terms of using the button. Any questions on that? Like David alluded to, that's just one way of converting your course. We also want to talk more about building new courses in Ultra and what we do post-conversion. Um, I'll turn it over to Chuck. So I wanted to touch on a course that is currently running in Blackboard Ultra this semester. And this isn't the live course. This is a course that I copied over. So this was the master course or the course that we use for development. And I copied over the course into here. Uh, so I'm going to hide my meeting controls just so I see everything. So the landing page for Blackboard Ultra it looks like this. And one thing to notice is most of the content and material falls in the middle of the page, much like Canvas, if you've used Canvas before. We're used to the side menu navigation, and a lot of the navigation we're used to is gone from there. So whenever we develop anything, it's here in the middle of the page. So notice that here, like the course information is in the middle. The helpful resources is in the middle. These are in folders. So this is an example of my live class that's all in folders. So this is an in-person class. So there's examples of folders and folders where I have my presentations for the class, my PowerPoints. There's assignments. <laughs> where students can submit. There's quizzes. And this is from our view here. You can see there's a quiz with a pool of questions and you can make each question worth whatever you want to be worth. You can provide due dates, all kinds of different categories for the grade book. And then I can show like the other, the online version of mm. the class as well which I would probably have to search, but this is the in-person class. A lot of the assignments are similar. The navigation is pretty easy. If you wanted to hide things, you can use this hide icon and just hide it, or you can do release conditions either by date or by performance, meaning they complete a task and then it opens it up for them. So you can do those release conditions just like in previous Blackboard with the adaptive release in Blackboard Learn. But in terms of like copying content, that is greatly improved. Everywhere you see these little plus signs where you can add something new. So you go to create and you can add a module, you can add a folder. For modules, like for your weekly content, that's best, especially for an online class, because it also gives students that side navigation where they can arrow over to the next page. So they can do a content page and arrow over to an assignment, arrow over to a quiz, arrow over to more content. Where the folders are exactly just like a folder on your computer where you're storing information for the students. Both are very helpful. And you use both based on what you want to do. A document would be a page, so a content page. You can have text, you can have pictures, you can have videos all embedded in this page, and you can have materials linked to it to web pages. A link, LTI connections, or, or SCORM packages, so anything that's external, like on the LTI, just to show some examples of what's in there under create. I think it's easier if I do it under a learning module. Uh, so here's an example of a document. You can add content, hit the plus sign, and you have your content market, mm -hmm. and that opens all your third-party apps. So Kaltura or H5P or Perusal, you can create all of these things in this back end, but then create it in the LTI link where students will have access to it. And you can also add external pictures or documents.
and then you can pile this stuff on to each other. So you can have your banner with a description mm -hmm. and then add more content or upload a file. This is where you would have access to Kaltura, like I said. So you can go to the content market, go to Kaltura Embed. It'll take a second. Oh, yours goes way quicker than mine. Yeah. Uh, and then either record a video, do an express capture, mm -hmm. do a quiz, or embed something that already exists. Save. It's a nice thing that it's really easy to move these things around. So if you wanted the video to be above this banner, you can just do the drag and drop feature. And just drag it up. So that, <laughs> that would be the document page, which it calls it a document. Blackboard Learn called it a content page. All the same idea. You can add all of your course content there. In the same way, you can hit this plus sign, add a quiz, add a test, add a module, add a folder. If you wanted to copy content from another course, it provides this copy content. And you can search another course. We'll pick the course that David's working on. You can copy the entire course in there, or you can arrow over and just pick one thing. So we can go to content, we go to module three. And if we just want this Irish language video, we can pick that or we can pick all of the stuff. So we can start copy or you can pick and choose something from another part of the course. And Chuck, that copy feature is really nice. If you opt to not use the little button that Katie showed, you didn't want to convert that one class, but maybe you want to keep your learn class, but you can ask a request from Chuck, Katie, or myself, and we can work with Keith over in on the Blackboard side of things and create a ultra shell for that course. So now you have the empty shell of ultra, but you have your populated master course possibly you can use that copy feature and say, let's just take the stuff out of that course in the learn course and put it in the ultra course. And that way you kind of save that learn course in case you get through it and you go, ah, and you pull out your hair, like we're not doing ultra this semester. You still have that one course intact, but you can copy stuff from it, kind of pillage that, that course and, and make it the ultra course. Then you can kind of have a best of both worlds. You look at your ultra course, you look at your learn course and you go, okay, I think I'm ready for learn or like, I'm not ready yet. Let's keep this learn course. Mm -hmm. So you can see just like that, the PowerPoint or whatever this content item is that I cover from one, that I copied over from one of David's courses that he's developing, came over. I have that new document that I, just, I didn't name it anything yet. Mm -hmm. We can organize these things by creating a new folder or learning module. We'll do a learning module. It adds it. And then you can click open that and do the double arrows and drag it into mm -hmm. your module and organize your course that way. You can also, same little plus sign, but that's inside the module or folder. You can add things from other courses or create something new in this course. And the module itself can go somewhere more logical or that makes more sense. You can drag it down to the bottom or to the top or even in between any of these folders. So that's just the basic taste of Blackboard Ultra. We'll dive into much more in the future sessions. Mm -hmm. I know that there was something interesting like that came up with Maura. She is one of our early adopters and I can point that out. So when creating an assignment, so we'll create an assignment. She did something that sounded really logical she wanted a place for students to submit something. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would do, aside from naming my assignments, uh, you know, name it whatever you want, then you add text where this is where you put your instructions. Mm 
<laughs> you know, I can make this a bigger title. What she did was she added an essay question, which sounds like it makes a ton of logical sense. But what that did is when attempting to grade the essay questions, it did not provide the opportunity for a grading pane like you would for an assignment. It treated it like an essay oh, question. Okay. I would think when it's in quiz, like an actual quiz and not an assignment, it'll show up as a gradable item and you don't have to download it. And maybe it's because the students, instead of filling it in as a quiz question, they did an attachment. Whatever it was, it wasn't allowing more of the opportunity to view it in a grade pane. So for an assignment, you don't have to add anything other than the instructions or video or whatever it is. This area down here is what the students see for submission. And this is what I feel is like one of those weird drawbacks where Blackboard needs to improve it. In traditional Blackboard Learn, there was a clear drag and drop area that also had buttons that said, go to computer, go to the class, go to a cloud and import a file. Where if I would put this now in student view, and I'll make sure it's available to students because it defaults not available. So if I go to student preview, and it's always worth testing this, just like in traditional Blackboard mm -hmm. Learn, we go exit because I didn't make the folder discard. So my sample mod, visible to students, student view. And go to the new assignment. The student would have to go view assignment. It gives the surface air level what it's worth, how many attempts you have. But if they want more details, they go to view assignment. And then to submit the assignment, they click on the box and they just get the same generic view that we do. They can click information in there, but if they want to submit a Word file or submit a PDF, they would have to hit the paper clip and then go and find an assignment, hit open, and attaches it, which that makes sense to me as an instructional designer because I'm like, okay, I need to attach something and hit the paper clip. But is that intuitive to the student? Is that intuitive to a brand new instructor using Ultra for the first time? I don't believe so, especially when we're going from a very clear drag your document in here option to what just looks like a text box. And I believe that invites students just to type their answer in there and not drag and drop it or hit the paper clip. So whenever creating your assignment instructions, make sure to say, hit the paper clip, upload only a Word or a PowerPoint file to help you out when you're grading and make sure that it's the file that you require for that specific assignment. And then you can see here's that assignment or whatever document I randomly picked from David's computer. So it's there, it uploaded. It makes sense once I uploaded it, but I think there was just a little bit of a disconnect compared to what we're used to. Mm -hmm. So going back to the car analogy, I love the automatic window, but in our minivan, if you hit it, it goes automatically up where I just want to hold it down because I want it to stop halfway up. I don't want it all the way down. And I always fight with it. And this is that one like little piece of innovation. I get the automatic window, I hit it once, it goes up, it goes down, but sometimes I run into trouble and the most simple thing, I stumble and I get upset. <laughs> and then I can hit submit, submit, and then the paper's in there. And it gives the student a little confirmation, and I believe also an email. And then they also have the option to download it if they don't have the file for some reason. Any other questions from the crowd or from my <laughs> peers or anything else that I should cover? I think that's good, Chuck. And I think if you do have questions, you can always email us. You can find our emails if you log on the SharePoint and you just either search or find in the faculty menu, there's a Learn AU. We have a homepage that you can reach out to us. Or if you're on campus, you can wander to Patterson, come up to the third floor. You'll see one of us or all of us up on the third floor wandering around or in our offices. You can always ask for assistance that way. Or attend one of our sessions. Keep a lookout for our live and face-to-face -face meetings and just swing on by. Like Katie alluded to earlier, just because you missed the first one doesn't mean we're not going to help you set up your course down the line. We'll help you out anytime you want to get into Blackboard Ultra.
All right, so the last thing, and I'm going to blow off of Katie, was just the big positives and negatives to maybe moving to Blackboard Ultra. And this is in general. Of course, we're going to find those nuanced things like Maura saw in her class about adding the quiz question and doing a submission or whatever it was that was kind of confusing in that assignment page. But when you take a look at it, Katie said consistent menu. If you saw on Chuck's screen, that menu is really short and sweet on the left-hand side, and it's always that menu. We can't edit that menu. It is what it is. Discussions and stuff that was on the top of the tab, that's what it is. It doesn't allow us to add a bunch of things that we maybe were used to adding in our course, but at the same time, it's consistent. So students will get used to using your Blackboard Ultra course, and you can find things a little bit easier because of that consistent menu option. Two, it adapts to screen sizes. So if you have a chance, open up your Blackboard Ultra course. If you start building into it, open it up on your tablet, your, your iPad, or open up on your iPhone or Android phone and take a look at it. It looks pretty nice. Look at your course in like a learn course. It looks, it can look nice. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes there's those weird things and wacky things that doesn't quite work on a cell phone. Typically we recommend not doing assignments and stuff and discussions on a tablet or phone because it's just kind of wonky to use. But now we might be able to recommend using that mobile device to do some assignments if we want to. Mm -hmm. Announcements are really nice because when a student now logs into your course, it pops up. So they can't miss an announcement like, oh, Dr. Piscatello, I didn't know you did that announcement. Well, it pops up before they do anything in the course. That's that little pop up that says your instructor made an announcement. They have to click out of it to go into the stuff. So that's kind of nice. That's that communication factor. It's a lot better at communicating to the students and sharing information with the students. Katie mentioned an uh, analytics. So discussion analytics are really nice. So you see how the students were responding, the quality of the response. Blackboard kind of helps you, you know, in that, in that way. Easy messaging. We'll share this in our next course or our next uh, training is the messaging to our students. Really nice. Definitely you can use your email and you can send out a group BCC blast to all your students. But now because of Blackboard Ultra, there's a messaging app built right into your course where you can message all the students at once or maybe just a couple students at once and it goes back and forth. And students, when they log into the Blackboard course, they'll get an alert that says they have a message from you or you have messages from them. So it's really nice for the messaging front. And Chuck should have a little bit the easy third-party embedding, YouTube clips, Kaltura clips. If you use like perusal and stuff, it's really nice. It's a little bit more streamlined and simplified just to put it in there and it looks nice. So you don't get like big videos, small videos. Sometimes the videos, again, look really weird on a mobile view. These will work across all devices, which is really nice. But we have seen some obstacles. We've heard some obstacles from others who've been using it. One is if you like things in folders and folders and folders and you like stashing things away somewhere, Blackboard kind of limits you that. So that could be a positive or it could be a negative. It's only a two folder system. Chuck showed one folder, it had a bunch of stuff. It had another, that folder had that stuff and that's it. You can't go any deeper. So you can only go too deep in folders. Limit text formatting. Again, on a designer side of thing, I kind of like that because it doesn't make, you can't make rainbow colors and you can't make things super crazy looking or red highlights here and green highlights here and blue highlights here. And this font size is this size or this size. Or when you cut and copy and or cut, copy and paste, mm -hmm. it makes the text really weird. I don't know if you ever copied stuff from a Word document into your Blackboard Learn Course or stuff from like a website onto here. It makes the font weird. You have Arial font, then you have like Helvetica font, then your font's 12 point, then it's 14 point, and then it's 12 and a half point. And it looks all weird. This one works really nice. You mm -hmm. copy stuff from your course to this, from your learn course, to your ultra course, looks really nice right off the bat. At the same time, it's very limited. So you can't have the bells and whistles. That's kind of plain Jane. So if you don't like plain Jane type of font, it can be an obstacle for you. Uh, there's no discussion subscription. I've heard faculty members who like subscribing to a discussion board and they recommend it for the students. So when, you know, people reply to your posts and stuff like that, you get the alert. Not there yet. Blackboard always says they're rolling out updates. They release, mm -hmm. I don't know, what's the thing they say, 50 to 75 updates since they first released Blackboard Ultra. It's always coming out. They're always listening to the faculty and you're trying to add things and make it really nice. There are trying to make it look really nice and function like a top tier LMS. So I'll give them credit for that. They're really nice. Blogs, wikis, and some other unique features that maybe are unique to your course, they might not be there yet. So just be aware when you do that neat uh, kind of preview that Katie showed us, take a look. And if you have something that's kind of different or that's kind of unique, take a look. Is Your blogs won't show up now. If you use wikis, your wikis mm -hmm. won't show up yet. So just be conscious of like the 
non-standard, you know, assignment or discussion. If you use something a little bit different, check out that group stuff. Some groups, things work, some, some do not. So you want to check some of those things out. Those are the big obstacles. What we try to do is, and, and Chuck's really good at this, is he's creating templates for all of us. So if you run into, you know, okay, Blackboard's kind of different. How do I relate that to my students? Chuck has a start here page. It has all kinds of neat, great information that if you want to use it, he just copies it and puts it in your course right away. And he just does that copy and he puts it right into that start here page. If you're discussion, you're like, okay, what kind of information do I need for discussions or assignments, you know, for the students? He might he can create a template for you. So when you create an assignment, there's already text in there and it says to submit your assignment, Make sure you put the paperclip icon to attach it and browse and, and et cetera, et cetera. And that goes into your assignments. And so you have a nice templated assignment that you can maybe duplicate and use over and over again. So I do highly recommend you reach out to an instructional designer. We're here to help and we can tag team this together and hopefully make that ultra conversion experience a little bit nicer. One question we always get like to end before we throw it out to everybody else is when do we have to go to ultra? When, when they get forced to? We don't know yet, I believe so far. We do know that Blackboard is ending support for Blackboard Learn, non-cloud versions that schools use. So schools can install it on their own servers and do it. That ends at the end of 2023. So we know it's creeping up. And so what we're trying to do is get ahead of it. So it's not like, hey, we need to move you to Ultra by next semester or two semesters from now. So I do recommend, you know, diving in a little bit early. You do have the preview. We can copy your course and you can get like a little bit of taste and keep your learn your original course intact. And so you get the best of both worlds if you want to do it that way. Other than that, if you have any questions, again, reach out to us in Patterson, email on SharePoint. Or if you're part of this training or future trainings, come on down, raise your hand, come in and help us help you anytime. 